Here's a linear inequality in slope-intercept form. Let's see how it's different than an equation. Think about this. If I plug in a number for x, like let's say 1. If x was 1, I would do 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, minus another 2 makes negative 4. If I was graphing an equation, I would now have a point at 1, negative 4 and that's the only point I would have found. But if this is an inequality, y is all the numbers less than negative 4 for the x-coordinate 1. So if you go over to 1 on the graph, think y is less than 4. So go down to negative 4. There is no point right there, but every number less than that that's lined up with x equals 1 is a point on this graph. Think of all the points, not just whole numbers, but everything in between is included in this graph. So I've only plugged in one number for x, and I already have an infinite number of points on the graph. But it doesn't cover the whole coordinate plane. There's nothing above that that's included. So how are we going to find this? It's going to be a big shaded region of points instead of just a line. But the line y equals negative 2x minus 2 provides us with a boundary for the shading. So it's an important guide and you are going to graph that first. So let's do that. The y-intercept is at negative 2 and the slope is negative 2. So the slope is negative 2 over positive 1 or 2 over negative 1, whichever way you like that. From this point, I think I'll go up 2. So up 2, backwards 1, like that. There's my, there's my line. And I shouldn't really put solid dots, but you get the idea. Okay, do you see how it also lines up with that hollow space right there? Now the way that we show that the line is not included is by drawing a dotted line. We do this whenever the symbol is either strictly less than or strictly greater than. So I'm going to draw a dotted line and that's going to be a boundary for me. Okay, so there's my boundary. The graph is a shaded region either below that or above that. And we already know, we have a hint right over here by the previous thing that I graphed, that it looks like the shading is all below that. Also, when the sign is less than, I'm thinking where are all the y-coordinates less than that graph? They would be below it, so that's my guess. But what we need to do to verify that is to pick a test point. So you can pick a point anywhere below that dotted line that you think is easy to calculate. I'm going to choose this one, negative 3, negative 3, and plug it in to the inequality. So I get negative 3 is less than negative 2 times negative 3 minus 2. And that is positive 6 minus 2, which is 4. And then we check and say, is this a true statement or a false statement? Negative 3 less than 4. That is definitely true, and that means it's included in the shaded region. So the shaded region is this side of the graph. And this is the kind of shading I'm going to show. If you want to shade it in with a colored pencil and really fill in the space, that's fine. But this graph is totally sufficient. So remember, look at the symbol to decide whether it's dotted or solid. Remember, it's going to be a shaded region either above or below the line. So make a guess about which way you think it goes and then choose a test point to verify that you've got the right spot. Now, what happens if I pick a point on the other side? We should get a false statement, right? For example, if I chose 0, 0, which appears to be in the region that's not included. Let's plug it in real quick. 0 is less than, that would be 0 minus 2, so 0 less than negative 2. That is false, as it should be. So when you get a false statement, you have chosen a point that's on the non-shaded side that is not included as part of the graph. Let's try another example. Okay, y greater than or equal to 1. This is going to be a solid line because of the or equal to. Either of these symbols is the shading and also the line are all part of the graph. So we'll draw a solid line this time. What does y equals 1 look like? Because that's our boundary. Well, that's a horizontal line that goes through y equals 1. 
So since it's solid, I'm going to draw a solid line right on there. So where should the shading be? This says y is greater than. So I'm going to guess it's above. And for my test point, I think I'll pick this point right here, 0, 3. So the y coordinate is 3, and there is no x coordinate, so it looks like this. 3 greater than or equal to 1. Yep, that's true. So that is on the shaded side of the line, and we add shading. You can add whatever kind of shading you want as long as I can clearly tell that that shading goes on forever. It just fills up the coordinate plane, but stops at that solid line. The solid line should also give you a true statement. So let's pick a, a dot on there. Here's a point at negative 3, positive 1. So y is 1, and there is no x in the inequality. Is 1 greater than or equal to 1? Yes, that's true. And that's why the line is included. And if we pick something that's not there, like 0, 0, it should be false. So let's try that. 0 greater than or equal to 1. Nope, that is false. And that is on the side that is not shaded. Here's a system of inequalities. So in this case, you're going to graph two inequalities on top of each other. Let's take a look at that cover slide at the beginning of the video. This is what a graph of a system of inequalities looks like. The blue region is the graph of one inequality, and the red region is the graph of a different inequality. The overlapped region, where it's kind of violet, is the graph of the system. And this is how your graph should look for a system of inequalities. Notice one of them turned out to be dotted and one is solid, and that's going to happen sometimes. Using colored pencils is a great way to show this kind of graph. Let's go back to our example. Okay, for the first one, we look at the symbol and see that it has an or equal to. So we've got a solid line through y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. The y-intercept is at 3. The slope is negative 1 over 2 or positive 1 over negative 2. From here, I'd like to go down, so I'm going to go down 1, positive 2. Or I could go up 1 and backwards 2. Either way, there's my line, and it's solid. So I will attempt to connect those with a solid line. And since it's less than, I'm thinking the dotted region is below. I'd like to plug in 0, 0 to test that. So if I plug in 0, 0, I get 0 is less than or equal to 0 times negative 1 half is just 0 plus 3. So is that true? 0 is less than 3. Yeah, that's true. So the side with the 0, 0 is where the shading is. So I'm going to shade below the line. Okay, it's not a work of art, but you get the idea. Do you see the red region? That's the first one. All right, for our second graph, the symbol is greater than, so it's going to be a dotted line. The y-intercept is at negative 5, which is right here. And the slope is 3, so that's 3 over 1 or negative 3 over negative 1. So from here, I'd like to go up, so I'm going to go up 3 over 1 a few times so I can really get the feel for how steep this is. There's my dotted line for a boundary. Okay, it's so close to vertical, it's kind of hard to think of above and below. But really look at where the y-axis is, okay? This says y is greater. So which side of that dotted line has the greater values of the y-axis? That would be over where 0, 0 is. So I'm going to use 0, 0 as a test point. That would make 0, 0 minus 5 is just negative 5. True or false, 0 greater than negative 5. That's true. So 0, 0 is on the side with the shading. So our shading is over here on this side, right? And I want to go right up to the line so I don't leave some gap that looks like there's no shading. So now we have a blue region, a red region, and a blue and red region. To read the solution, think about this. Where do you think we would find true points? Now clearly, all the points in this area would give us true statements for both inequalities because you see both colors. But that's not all. Notice that the red lines up with the solid line. They are part of the same graph, so the solid line counts as red. Think about where the solid line intersects with blue also. It intersects on this side of the dotted line, 
but not on the other side of the dotted line. So any of the points on the solid line above the dotted line would give you a true statement for both inequalities. And the shaded region that is blue and red would also give you true statements if you plug those points into the inequalities. Everywhere else would be false. That is what a system of inequalities looks like. We don't normally write the words true or false on the graph. I'm just trying to make a point with that. But otherwise, this is how your graph could look, or it could look even better than mine. Good luck.